The Department of Public Health and Human Services is pleased to bring you Aging Horizons. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, Fraud, Legal Issues, Veterans Benefits and Caregiving. Aging Horizons is a program dedicated to inform and prepare Montanans on these timely issues, making a difference to you and your loved ones. Here now is today's program host. Hi folks, today on Aging Horizons, we're gonna be talking about something pretty darn important. It's almost tax time, and we've got a couple of our really, really smart guys from the Department of Revenue here today who are gonna help us uh, learn about some tax credits, about some eligibility for some programs that you might wanna look into. Because remember, you don't wanna pay more tax than you have to. So today, stay tuned. Respite. It's okay to need it. It's okay to want it. Will you provide it? The hard part about having outside help is that there's not a lot of people out there who can do that kind of work. We've been very fortunate that our Bonnie has been with us for seven years. I don't know what I'd do without her. I need her in our lives. She's our second mother. And I can't help but think of her that way. To find out how to change lives, including your own, call 800-224-6034 or visit respite.mt.gov. Questions about Medicare and other types of insurance? Contact the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office to get answers to questions like, what is the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? And how do you decide if you need Medicare supplemental insurance? This insurance counseling program is not a sales program. It is available to provide answers to your insurance questions. For more information, call the State Health Insurance Assistance Program Office at 1-800-332-2272. I have so many questions about power of attorney. Well, some powers of attorney are for finances and others are for healthcare decisions. A power of attorney designates an agent who would make decisions on your behalf. While making a power of attorney, you have the ability to control your agent's power. You also have the ability to decide when that POA would take effect. Wait, am I giving away all my rights? Power of attorney isn't a license to make any decision for you, just those that you've specified. Your agent should be somebody that's working in your best interest, but it should also be somebody that you would trust. What if they try to abuse their power? Protective measures like third-party accounts secondary signatures, defined spending and gifting limits can help protect against financial exploitation. An agent's powers can always be limited by a customized power of attorney, and they can be revoked by you or the court if the power of attorney is abused. So carefully drafted estate planning documents can help ensure that your finances are monitored, but not abused. If you or someone you know is being exploited, please report to Aging Services Bureau at 844-277-9300 or the legal service developer at 1-800-332-2272. This message is sponsored by the DPHHS Aging Service Bureau. Hello everyone and welcome to Aging Horizons, brought to you by the Department of Public Health and Human Services. I'm your host, Kimmy Everman, and today we're going to be talking taxes. It's almost that time again, and we want to help you with as many uh, resources and programs as we can to make sure that you don't pay more tax than you have to. Today with us, we have Sanjay Telwani. Hi, Sanjay. And we Good also, morning. And we have Bryce Katz. And, hi, Bryce. Oh, um, and these are both a couple of guys from the Department of Revenue, so we know we're going to get some great information from them. And Sanjay, let's start with you. Um, t talk a little bit about, I, you know, one of the things that you mentioned to me was, where's my refund? So let's just right jump into that. Yeah, that's right. You know, we're, we're in the middle of tax season. People have been filing. And one of the biggest questions we get now at the Department of Revenue is, where's my refund and luckily it's real easy to find out online you don't have to call us up you can go to our website which is mtrevenue.gov that's mtrevenue.gov mm -hmm. and there's a button right there for where's my refund and you enter a little bit of your personal information so we know it's you and uh, you'll find out if your refund is um, been received, if it's still being processed, or if there's some kind of delay. And so that's uh, the information, you know, you can find in just in just um, really seconds, less than a minute, where your refund is. And and you'll, you'll know if it's, you know, you can make sure it's not lost. Right. Um, but just so people know, it can take up to 90 days um, to process refunds and, and get them out to you. And that's because of um, there's so much uh, identity theft and fraudulent tax filings out there um, that there's a lot of uh, measures and precautions and checks and balances to make sure that when we get a tax return and we send out a check, it's the tax return filed by the person who says it is and the check's going to the person whose name is on the check. And right. we just got to make sure of those so nothing bad happens. 
And Sanjay, um, uh, since we we're talking about where's my refund, let's also talk about filing electronically because that's something that we're really encouraging folks to do, right? Yeah, that's right. Year after year, I mean, the simple facts are if, if you file electronically, you're more likely to get your refund more quickly than if you file on paper. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, it's just uh, less work for um, our folks processing it. There's more security. There's just less chance of an error being made. Uh, and so just with, with um, the extra kind of hoops that it has to jump through, if it's a paper return, uh, it just adds extra days. And so um, you're just a much, much more likely to get it more quickly. Um, you know, we still, of course, take paper returns. Um, sure. More and more and more people are filing electronically, and we do have more and more um, improved options to make it easier to file electronically. Well, and one of the nice things about filing electronically is you get the check usually to your bank account. You don't even have to get a paper check. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's direct deposit, except um, just to, so folks know, if you're filing for the first time in Montana. Okay. Um, um, you will get a paper check okay. um, for various security reasons. Um, if you're a first-time father, there's a few more um, security measures that take place. And part of that is actually sending a paper check because if we send a paper check to Bozeman or Missoula or Glendive, we know it's going to Bozeman or Missoula or Glendive. We know it's not going to a bank account controlled by someone on the other side of the sure. planet sure. who stole your W-2 information and right. filed a fake return. And so there's a little extra extra measure. Um, most people do get their, their um, refunds by direct deposit and of course it's very secure right and and you've you've always told us how secure a process this is so i i think that we can really take that to the bank if you will <laughs> <laughs> that was bad <laughs> um so sanjay how about let's talk a little bit also about some of the tax credits that are really important to um our audience like the elderly tax credit yeah, there's a, a pretty popular tax credit called the Elderly Homeowner and Renter Tax Credit. Um, it's for uh, low, lower income seniors who, um, uh, and, it, and it amounts to basically a, a tax refund, a refundable tax refund based on the amount of mortgage you pay or the amount of um, uh, uh, rent yeah. you pay. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, or more accurately, the uh, property taxes you pay. Um, so to qualify, you have to have been a full year resident, um, uh, or I'm sorry, you have to be a resident at least um, nine months out of the year. You have to live here. You have to have turned 62 or older in the last year and have a total household income for all members of your household of $45,000 or less. Okay. And the tax credit is up to $1,000, depending on your circumstance, and it's refundable. That means even if you don't pay any income taxes at all or your income is so low, you don't have to file and you're basically paying zero taxes, um, this will come back as a refund. So it's almost like you're paying negative taxes wow. um, if, if you file this. So it's a really good credit. It's very popular and it's easy to um, apply for. It's easy to apply for because um, you can do it online um, a couple of ways through what we call a transaction portal. And um, you can also do it through a relatively new feature we have called MT Quick File. And this is an electronic thing right on our website, not a third party software, okay. but right on our website. And uh, for people with simple tax situations, um, not a lot of complications, not asking for any credits except the elderly homeowner renter credit. Mm -hmm. You can use this and you can go to our website, check it out, answer a couple of questions online. And you'll know if you if you if you if you qualify in terms of the simplicity of your taxes and you can file for the credit there uh, again, even if you don't owe taxes at all or otherwise wouldn't have a filing obligation. You can still file it there online. And more and more people are doing that this year. They're finding that that works and it's easier than filing on paper and it's done in you know matter of minutes great well folks we're coming very close to the end of our first segment and we just want to let you know that we have a lot more information to tell you about uh, it's tax time we want you to make sure that you are able to get all the credits that you deserve to get and that you don't pay more than you have to pay we've got some great more resources uh, to tell you about so stay with us don't go anywhere we have a lot more for you
think the most pleasant surprise when we turned 65 and signed up for Medicare Part B was finding out about our Welcome to Medicare preventive visit. It was free, and it gave us the opportunity to visit with our doctors and establish a plan for our health going forward. They reviewed our medical history, measured our height, weight, blood pressure, and counseled us on other risk factors. To learn more about Medicare's free or low-cost preventive and wellness benefits, call your local SHIP counselor at 800-551-3191. I mentioned it's free, right? Twice. Elder abuse is a growing problem, and it's happening right here in our Montana communities. At least one in 10 older adults are victims of physical or emotional abuse, financial exploitation, or neglect. To get help or report elder abuse, call your local area agency on aging or adult protective services at 1-844-277-9300. I was the last guy you'd expect to get diabetes. I was a competitive runner and I always took care of myself. So when I was diagnosed, it kind of threw me. But it's really encouraging to know I'm not alone with it. There are a lot of other people going through the same things as I am. It takes some effort. You have to keep after it. Exercise, meds, and diet are the key. But there are a lot of folks who want me to succeed. Diabetes is not the end of the world. With effort and attitude, you can have a normal life. Flight 109. Is that Evil Knievel on the runway? Whoa, Daredevil! You need a Montana Real ID to fly. Go to mtrealid.gov to make an appointment. Looks easier than jumping a canyon. Smile. I see you changed your name from Robert to Evil. Did you bring your name change documentation? I'm not trying to pull a stunt. Got the paperwork right there. Go to mtrealid.gov. Now I can fly! It's that easy! Hi everyone, welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're talking about taxes, it is almost that time and we want to make sure that you get the, uh, the help you need, the resources you need, and you know uh, exactly what you're doing when you're filing your taxes this year. We have with us today Sanjay Talwani. Uh, hi Sanjay, good to have you. And we also have Bryce Cotts, and both of these guys are from uh, the Department of Revenue uh, here in Helena and came today to talk to us about some of the, the tax tips we need to know. Now, Bryce, uh, I wanted to talk with you about the veteran um, tax credit that is out there, or the property tax credit. Can you tell us about that? Um, sure. So there's two programs available um, for people that actually help lower the property taxes they pay. So it's not a tax credit you would get on your income tax okay. return, but it actually goes to lowering the tax bill you receive oh. um, from your county treasurer for your property. Um, so the first one is the Property Tax Assistance Program, or PTAP, and the second one is the Montana Disabled Veterans Program. Great. Um, both, both programs are, are pretty similar with just a few differences. Um, so for the property tax assistance program, to qualify, you have to own the property. You have to reside in that property as your primary residence for at least seven months of the year. And then you have to fall within the income thresholds in order to qualify. Um, pretty similar for the Montana Disabled Veterans Program. Um, still, you have to own that property. You have to reside in that property as your primary residence for at least seven months of the year. You have to fall within the income uh, guidelines. But the one other additional caveat for that program is that you have to be rated at 100% disabled from Veterans Affairs or paid at the 100% disabled rate. Right, right. And what we know is that some folks at 70% are paid 100%. So you might have that lesser, but you're still being paid 100%. And that you said that it, it lowers the tax bill? Um, yeah, so the way the program works is if you qualify, um, there's different tiers for property tax assistance. Uh, you can qualify for either an 80%, 50%, or 30% reduction on the first $200,000 of the value of your property. Okay. Um, so we apply a reduced tax rate than what you would normally see, which results in a, a lower property tax bill. Um, the same thing goes for the Montana Disabled Veterans Program. Um, a little a little better there. Um, you can qualify for either a 100%, 80%, 70%, or 50% reduction with that program. Right. Now, Bryce, what about um, 
does this is this a, a a benefit that turns over every year, or do you have to do you have to reapply each year? Um, no. So that was changed four or five years ago, where you used to have to apply annually. Now you just need to apply the one time. Um, once we have your application and have you in our system each spring um, with tax season, we will verify what your income was, um, see if you still qualify at what level you qualify for. And then typically in mid-May, we mail out decision letters to everyone we have in the system, letting them know whether they've been granted or denied and if they're granted at what level of benefit they've been granted at. Oh, great. Um, and just, I, I just want to remind our folks that my husband's a, a veteran and we've taken uh, advantage of this program, but you still have to pay your water and your, and your garbage. <laughs> you can't just not pay. <laughs> I learned that um, we got our tax bill and I realized that I had to pay for that, but the tax bill being lowered was really, really nice. Um, is this a program, Bruce, that uh, either one of those, the PTAP or the veterans, that you're, you're seeing a lot of people um, uh, trying to be eligible for, or do we need to get the word out? Um, yeah, they're pretty popular programs, but I'm sure there's always people out there that aren't aware of them and, and would benefit from getting into these programs. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there's around 23,000 uh, households that take advantage of the property tax assistance program. Oh, here in Montana? Around, yep, in Montana, and then around 3,000 that take advantage of the Montana Disabled Veterans That's program. great. And what about um, the application itself, Bryce? Do, do they need to... You know, like for the veterans, do they need to go to VA or where do they actually apply? Um, yeah, so you can find the application form for both programs on our website, mtrevenue.gov. Um, you can call our call center and one of those people are usually more than happy to put an application in the mail for you. Um, they're pretty basic, straightforward, simple applications. Um, just with that Montana Disabled Veterans application, we do need a copy of your letter from the VA showing that you are rated at the 100% rate right. or getting paid at the 100% rate. Okay, so you would need a copy of that if you're getting the veterans um, to put with your application. And with uh, the PTAP, is there other documentation that needs to come with it? Um, not generally, it's just the application itself. As long as you've been filing a Montana tax return, return we can verify your income through those sources so you don't have to provide us with anything. Um, we do generally ask if you aren't filing a tax return, maybe because you don't have a filing requirement, that you just indicate that on your application and then provide us with like a copy of your uh, 1099 if all you receive is social security. Sure. Um, or if you've moved in from out of state to where you filed a, a tax return in another state and haven't yet filed in Montana, then we would just ask that you would provide a copy of your other state tax return. Okay. And uh, Bryce, if they need to, can they just call Department of Revenue and ask those questions? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have filled offices throughout the state that they can uh, call and get information on, or they can call our call center here in Helena and um, those people are very knowledgeable and always more than willing to help answer any questions. Super, super. Well, folks, okay, you've heard about two, three great programs that can help reduce your tax uh, liability. You want to hear more about what we have to tell you because it's almost tax time. Stay with us. Every 65 seconds, someone is affected with Alzheimer's or other dementias. Many become isolated at a time when help is most needed. If you or someone you love is affected, help is available, both for people with memory loss and their caregivers. Memory loss can feel frightening, but you are not alone. Call the free 24-7 Alzheimer's Association helpline, 800-272-3900, for guidance and support. This is Bill. He just received his new Medicare card and is following some simple rules to protect himself from fraud. He knows to never give out his Medicare, Social Security, or bank number over the phone. 
And this is Nancy. She knows that to detect any problems, she always reads her Medicare Summary Notice or Medicare Advantage EOB to make sure the billing is correct. Both Bill and Nancy know that anything suspicious can be reported to Montana SMP at 1-800-551-3191. Forty-five years, two packs a day. It's like eighty thousand dollars. I thought I was just hurting myself until I fell asleep in a chair with a cigarette. The whole house went up. I lost it all. I knew smoking was expensive, but I never thought it would cost me everything. The human heart, even at its strongest, it's a fragile muscle. Chest and arm pain, shortness of breath, are signs of a heart under attack. But three numbers can save a life. Dial 911 at the first sign of a heart attack. Quick response from medical experts can save your life. I was 45 and it happened to me, a heart attack. Dialing 911 saved Ryan's life. Now he's here and he's healthy. This message sponsored by Mission Lifeline Montana. Hi everyone, welcome back to Aging Horizons. We're talking about taxes, but it's not so bad because we've got some really, really great guests with us today who are telling us all the newest, latest, and greatest and some of the programs that are out there. Um, now Sanjay, let's talk, to, let's talk again about some of the latest and greatest um, information in tax land right now. You were talking to me off camera about remote workers. What's new on that? Well, yeah, that's right. And as you know, 2020 was an unusual year for a lot of people in a lot of ways. And a lot of people work remotely. Um, I'm in a Zoom call right now. Mm -hmm. uh, many people came from out of state to Montana and continued our jobs in Montana. Now, that's, um, that's great. But we have a, the, the important thing that those folks need to remember is if you came to Montana and you worked in Montana and you earned income in Montana, you owe Montana state income tax right. on that work, right. even if you live somewhere else, even if your job is normally based somewhere else. So you may well be a non a Mont there is a, a you could file as a non-resident of Montana, and that may be your situation. So, um, you know, if you came here and you're, go you're going back to wherever it is um, when it's safe, um, you have to you have to do that or, or you know, you, you may end up uh, yeah. being late. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, you know, if you came here, you know, we're, 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 we're glad you're safe. We're glad you're healthy. We hope you've enjoyed our state. And we also know that people do want to pay their fair share. Right. Um, when they come to Montana, they enjoy our state, our lands, our lifestyle. And most people realize, you know, paying taxes is part of that. Yes. So, um, so we just encourage people to look that up, look at their, look at, make, look closely at the rules in their home state and come to our um, website at mtrevenue.com. Uh, you may be filing as a as a non-resident, and it's it's important that that you do that. Yeah, and also um, in in line with the sort of basics, what about your keeping your address current? Yeah, speaking of moving, yeah, um, uh, pe people moving around, uh, it is important um, that the Montana Department of Revenue has your accurate mailing address um, because. Uh, we may we may need to correspond with you. There may be uh, questions or maybe a security co issue and we have to resolve it and we do send mail to people and you really don't want that correspondent to get delayed. Okay. Um, secondly, the people who get paper checks, which is all first time filers, um, the post office won't forward those checks right. to a new address. So if you move, if you file your return and then you move, you have to let us know. This especially applies to... Um, this can apply to uh, snowbirds, people who are moving, people who are partial resident, partial year residents, and college students. It really hits college students because they file in March, you know, then they kind of forget about it. They have college things to do. They go home somewhere else for the summer, and they still got that box, whatever, in Missoula um, where their check um, sure. might go. And then it gets returned to Department of Revenue. We have to find you. And you want your money, and we want you to have your money. So keep your address current. And you can't just, unfortunately, you can't just call us up and give your address because we want to make sure you're the one changing your address. So go to mtrevenue.gov. There's a form to fill out the right way and submit it to us so that it's taken care of. So that's a good thing to do. If you're wondering where your refund is, come, come June, 
Um, Check you know, it out. It may have gone to your old address if you mm -hmm. moved. Yeah. Well, and it, it's good that that doesn't get forwarded, but we, we have yeah. to be on our game. Um, as yeah. as people are getting those checks, and you also mentioned um, some website uh, action that's going on over there at DOR. You got some? Do you have a new website? Well, we don't. We we uh, the the newest address for our website, the simplest and it's easy to remember, okay. mtrevenue.gov, mtrevenue.gov, and uh, it really has uh, almost every question you might ask. You can find there. So you have a question about a particular credit. You have a question about deadlines, um, a question about deductions, exemptions. Um, this question I just, you know, are you a resident or a non-resident? Nearly every question you'd ask, you can find an answer on our on our website, mtrevenue.gov. And you can also call our call center uh, during regular hours at 444-6900. Um, but you know, the uh, website just has, all, has most of the answers you'd want to. You can get them quicker. You can get them after hours. So if people have questions, we really recommend uh, they go to our website. And you can quickly, um, you know, getting back to uh, MT Quick File, which is in its first full year, um, right? You can go there and you can, right from our website, with a click or two, take a couple of questions and see if you qualify for that. So if you have a lot of questions, it's worth just poking around and having a look. Again, that's mtrevenue.com. Of. And would you just say um, a couple of words about the MT file that's new? Um, yeah, MT Quick File. Um, it started last year, and it's for people who have pretty simple, simple taxes. And um, by that, I mean you have to have your income from uh, either W twos or a couple of the different 1099s. Um, so you can't have a whole lot of um, other income, you know, rental income, things right. like that. You have right. you have to be filing a single head of household or marrying filing jointly, uh, meaning you can't file married filing separate. Right. Um, you can only take the standard deduction. You can't itemize, and you're not claiming any credits except the elderly homeowner renter credit. You can claim this way, mm -hmm. and so. For people, again, this is kind of a lot for, you know, it's for young taxpayers, it's for old taxpayers, it's for people who are semi-retired and just have a simple financial situation. It's for young people who don't have a mortgage, just have a W-2, and and um, you don't have to go to a third-party tax software. Um, you can, our, our website will ask you a couple of questions, and then if, you, if you're able, if you meet those criteria that I just described, you don't have to write them down, you can just go to the website and answer the questions. Right. And then if you answer, if you qualify to use this application, it'll, you, it'll send you to it. And if oh, not, awesome. it'll say, oh, no, you can't use this, but here's some other software you can look at you know, that, that may work for you that's not this MT Quick file, you know, because your, your taxes are a little more complex and you need sort of the full software package that's out there. That's but good this is for, news. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's good news, yeah. Sanjay. And Bryce, also, thank you so much for telling us about the programs today. We appreciate you both being on right before the tax day comes. So thanks so much. And thank folks, th th it's almost tax time. If you have any questions, you can go on the website. You can call the call center for DOR and get your ans questions answered so that you file it once and done. For Aging Horizons, I'm Kimmy Everman. Special thanks to the Department of Public Health and Human Services for their continued support. Hosts on Aging Horizons are program specialists at the Montana Office on Aging. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions. For more information about Aging Horizons, call the Department of Public Health and Human Services toll-free at 800-332-2272.